You know, I really enjoy fishing this time of year. Everything has greened up. We're past the solstice. I get to wear short sleeves and I get to fish smaller flies. And what that also means is that I'm going to be fishing Scandi heads. And sometimes that transition from casting Skagit heads to casting a Scandi head is a little frustrating because it requires a, a little different casting stroke. And I want to talk about that quickly. When I'm casting a Skagit head, I'm really focused on the anchor letting it bite, and making sure that the sweep is an outward rotation so that when I make the forward stroke, the fly, when it leaves the water, is going away from me. And that's quite a bit different than a Scandi head. With a Skagit head, I'm working on the principle that I have a very heavy sink tip and a large fly, and I'm going to use the mass of the fly line to launch it, to get it to actually work. And the only way that works is to let the sink tip bite create some rotational force by uh, sweeping the fly line out around the anchor and then being very uh, careful and conscious of the turnover phase of the cast, making sure that it's off your shoulder, that it's directed away from your shoulder. Uh, and that's how you guarantee that you don't get hit with the fly. I'll make a cast. It's a double spay. I'm going to put the anchor really close to me and then rotate the fly line out and around. And once the cast starts, with the sweep, it doesn't stop until the rod stops at the end of the forward cast. Um, everything comes off the water cleanly, everything turns over with power. Well, that's a very different casting stroke than you would use with a Scandi head. So the Scandi head, I can cast using a snake roll. I'll use that first. And that just goes. I can also use a double spay. I could uh, use a reverse single spay. There are all these options that because it's a floating line and you have the control of the line and the leader and the fly, uh, that, that, that are possibilities. With a Skagit head, it's a little hairy to try snake rolls and you know, off-shoulder single spays. But with a Scandi line, you can have a lot of fun. But the key to each one of those casts is where you direct the energy in the D-loop. With a Scandi head, you want to make sure that you're directing the energy 180 degrees from the direction you want to cast. With a Skagit head, I was creating rotational force, and I was keeping that force off my shoulder during the turnover phase of the cast. But with a Scandi head, I want to direct that energy into that 180 degree principle. I'll do a double spay quickly here. When I begin the sweep, I'm not hitting it like I do with a Skagit head. I'm actually coming around quite slowly and then I'm applying the energy in the sweep in the last half of the sweep so I have the most control of where I put that D loop. So here's a double spay and I'm going to direct it there. Man, that was a dart. And the reason that cast worked is because I had a lot of overhang, but at the same time I waited on that sweep to generate the power into the D loop as opposed to relying on that rotational force that you generate early in the sweep with a Skagit head. Does that make sense?